Hello everybody, my name is Ace Face. Welcome back to the Capsulea Day of 2022 event. We're going to be attempting again to tackle this event as an alpha clone. Um, I want to find a fit that works. Um, I've been having a bit of uh, trouble finding time lately. I'm uh, studying medicine at university right now. I'm placed at the pediatric surgery place. Days are pretty long, not a lot of free time, but I found a bit of time now to get to this event. We've got uh, a Drake fit coming up right here. That's what I came up with. Um, so I went quite hard on the tank right here compared to the previous uh, the previous Harbinger fit we used. So you can see you've got 159 HP per second, not using any implants. We've got, I mean, a bit over 50% resist across the board. So it's more like, I don't know, I think it's about, if a tank is going to be about 300 HP tank, per second tank, and I think that'll be all right. We've got multi-spectrum shield Arden over here various types of missiles we've got scourge ones because uh they just do the most amount of damage on the drake and then we've got the two missile guidance computers the heavy assault missiles they have really short range so if i go with scourge rage we've got 19 kilometers range right here and with two of these missile uh, range scripts we have 23 kilometers and i think 23 kilometers is a decent amount of range for these sites like just about because i saw that all the rats were about 20 kilometers just a bit over 20 kilometers range max so i think it's good to be able to at least hit out to them uh, but then the good thing about these computers is that we can adjust them. So say we have a lot of small stuff, we can also put the missile uh, precision script. So that would be good for application purposes. The thing is, like, if we would want to get the best application, it would probably be better to just go with the web because webs are really good at improving application when it comes to the missiles. But I think that the range is quite important to have in this kind of case because uh, the heavy assault missiles have got really tiny range and stuff can get a little bit far away. And that was with the Harbinger when I was using pulse lasers. Um, it was a bit hard to get in optimal range so i'm going to test this out it could probably be improved in some way but I've just got basic large shield extenders shield power relays ballistic control systems pressure twos heavy assault missile tech twos and for you guys who don't know you can actually as an alpha clone use tech two heavy assault missiles it is possible some people think that you can't because you couldn't previously when alpha clones were initially uh, released but you can actually use them nowadays okay so we're gonna fit this right here Drake 2022. Hopefully this goes smoothly. I really hope we don't get popped again, but we've got a decent amount of tank. I mean, 159 HP per second tank with some decent resists as well. I could have put more multi-spectrums over here, but the thing is the capacitor was a bit on the short end. Like, see that 0 0.9 gigajoules per second, and I think the tank will be alright like this. But that's one thing to also take into consideration, because you've got actually newts on the grid. So, I mean, if our newts cause us to turn off this uh, multi-spectrum shield hardener, it won't be a good time. And another reason why we've got pretty low capacity is just because we've got a module called shield power relay. I'll show you that. I'm just going to reload real quick right here. Okay, let's just go to do an, uh, this module right here, the shield power relay. These reduce our capacity in exchange for really good shield HP per second. Okay, let's go. We'll go with the range script initially. And I was thinking of maybe putting a prop mod on, but I was thinking that this ship is just going to try to brute force tank it, so I'll just use everything, have everything go for the tank. Because I didn't see last time, at least, there was a big distance I had to travel, so I think it'll be all right to just go with the brute force tank. And I felt like there were, there were webs there, I believe, as well, so it's not like we're going to be able to speed tank with a battle cruiser anyway. Okay, let's check here. Nothing here. We'll just continue towards Duzane and we'll see if we can find anything. A smuggler hideout on the way there. Have we got any nice boosters? We've got the DD apprehension boost. So warp scrambler range. Ooh. Uh, apprehension. <laughs> warp scrambler strength as well. Ooh, you could really like take out some haulers who've got warp core stabilizers. But this. <laughs> mm, that's quite funny, actually. Apprehension. Apprehend those people. Halcyon. G5. Cap recharge. Shield capacity. Hmm. We can, I guess, claim this booster right here. I mean, I would want to test this ship for the ship itself and not when we have boosters. So we could just keep this in mind. We could maybe test this if uh, it's not enough. Like, if we see our shields are falling. But I don't think boosters are going to be what makes or breaks attack. Either we're going to tank it or not with or without a booster. Agency. Anything nearby? Oh, there's two there. Kusumonmon, Kusumonmon. Let's go there, Kusumonmon. Let's go. I just stopped there because 
got this habit of when I see a site in the adjacent systems in the agency, then it's more likely than not in a system that I'm not warping to. So I just have a habit of as soon as I see something I want to warp to, I just stop straight away just so I don't accidentally warp to different gates. So I just waste a bunch of time warping. Okay. But there's two sites, so that's good to see. Unfortunately, I have a feeling we won't get a good test of tank because we we're very close to Jita. We're at three jumps, I think, from Jita. Because Mormon is pretty close to Jita. So there's probably going to be other people there taking aggro and we won't be able to test our tank. But it would be nice to at least see if it's possible to just get through the site. How it feels. Feeling is an important thing in EVE Online. <laughs> at least for me. Okay, we'll walk here to smuggle a hideout. See what we've got here. See what we've got here. People are asking me why I'm doing this stuff as an alpha clone. And the reason is because... Right now I'm doing a bit of project on my other character, he's in a different part of space, a super secret area of space. <laughs> but uh, no, the main reason actually is just because a lot of people ask, so if I find a, a fit that works for an alpha clone that I know that okay then that's definitely going to work for a mega clone and I can sort of build upon that for an omega clone because like the sort of low barrier is, or the, like the, if it, the barrier to entry sort of, okay if it's an alpha clone then if I know it works as an alpha clone, I know it's going to work as an Omega Clone. I could probably upgrade it because I'm just going to overall perform better as an Omega Clone. Let's see, anyone here? No one's here. Okay. Multi Spectrum Shield Hardener. Let's go. Before we saw that Tornadoes and Icky Tursas were doing a ton of damage. So those are things to take into consideration. If you're curious how you get that kind of a damage view log analyzer I used before, because you can use this website called just Eve Log Analyzer. Just type Google Eve Log Analyzer. You can find in your documents folder on your computer some combat log or game log. And you can just put the file in there. You can see what kind of ships did the most amount of damage. Okay. So we've got Drago, Rapier. Let's go over the cruisers first. We've got the Squid Rage. Where is the... Where is the gate here? There's a gate over there. So we'll just make our way slowly towards this. And that looks quite cool, actually. The scenery right here. Look at that. All those asteroids. He's got a pretty fat tank, this guy. But we're tanking also pretty decently, so that's good to see. Okay, so we've got one rapier down right here. Tanks seems to be holding out really good. Let's just see how good the application is. So where's this resist right here? Shield, 65% resist. We do each volley 2,000 damage. We're doing 400, 500 volleys to this guy. No, okay. That was not... I don't think that was 100% application. We're just seeing now. We're losing a third of our damage. I guess that would be about 600 here at least we want to go to precision look at this guy really close smug draugr right here we'll go towards this gate precision get some more damage now yeah get some good hits right there and i mean it's not like we're doing all out tank we've still got two damage modules i mean at least we've got some damage modules you maybe would have so much tank on some ships that you would have no damage modules like if you're going brute force tank and this is pretty fun because the drake in my opinion is a very good looking ship so if this is able to do this very well i'll be very happy popped popped maybe we go with uh Kaldari navy well he is almost gonna die anyway that hyena but Kaldari Navy is going to have some really good uh, application. Oh, we could actually use the drones as well. Droney drones. Droney drones popped. There we go. Can recall them because in all these events, there's always just so much drone aggro. I don't even bother testing nowadays. Okay, so I guess I have to destroy more NPCs to be able to get to the next room. More NPCs here. Hyena Manticore. Mm hmm. But I think it's good to use the Kaldari Navy right here just because we'll max out the application. Oh, there's a Cerberus. Just check out the drone aggro right here. 600 volley, that's pretty decent. Oh, there's a tornado now. Okay, good. Now we'll switch over to Rage. We'll go for this Cerberus, or this Cerberus over here. Actually, no, we'll go for Tornado. We'll stop with this precision script right here. Missile range. Oh, we're taking a bit of damage now. In our drones, you see there? Drones, unfortunately. But we're tanking really good. Look at that tank right there. 
We're not even at our max regen, which is around here. But that's really good to see. We've got some pretty boss tank, actually. I feel like we could almost downgrade the tank a tiny bit, maybe. But I don't want to get too cocky now, but we could maybe put more DPS. Perhaps, you know, perhaps. You never know. Okay, let's go for the Cerberus right here. We have the drones go on the hyena. Because since the hyena is orbiting so close, and then I'll just be able to recall them really quickly if they were to take damage. Go for the precision script right there. We've got a Cerberus on grid as well. Uh, why is he uh, uh, scoping me, this guy? Maybe he's mistaking me for an NPC. Perhaps. Come on, drones. Do your magic. Okay, he warped off. What is the range here? 16 kilometer range. So we're just at the border of our range. It could be that we're missing a few shots right here on this Cerberus. So we might just put a range script just to make sure everything hits. Where's the volley? 400. Where's his risk profile? 79 percent. Oh, that's like five. Have all our damage divided by five. <laughs> that's really great. Crazy resist on this guy right here. Deploy drones again. We'll go for the hyena. Yeah, that, that uh, Cerberus was pretty crazy. Okay, let's go. These Manticore over here. Oh, the active acceleration gate as well. Go into the active acceleration gate. I wonder what's here. Oh, but this is cool that we're not just dying straight away now. <laughs> so, if this works, I guess it's good. This would be then an Alpha Clone viable ship. However, still, even if this is a successful run, I think that you've got to be a little bit careful if you're trying to imitate this because one thing to take into consideration is that my character right here has got max level Alpha Clone skills. And also there might be some variations of this size that sometimes it's like certain types of NPCs, sometimes certain other ones. So just uh, keep in mind that even if it may work here very smoothly, your mileage may vary for you. So just always, just as a rule of thumb, never risk too much of the, or stuff that you can't afford to lose because it's not going to usually turn out too well then. Okay, two Cerberus, two Manticores. Taking some pretty fat hits right here. Ikitasa as well. Oh, there's Ikitasa. We should definitely go for the Ikitasa. Let's forget about this. Abris. Go for the Ikitasa. And we'll go with dual precision scripts just for max damage. Come on, take out the Ikitasa. Just keep an eye on our drones. Oh, the Ikitasa is going out pretty fast. This tank is actually not as big as I thought it was. It might have low uh, kinetic resist yeah look at that kinetic resist is really low in the ikitasa i wonder what the cerberus's lowest resist is em so i guess it just varies a little bit from ship to ship it makes sense because ikitasa naturally have pretty low kinetic resist if you, you know, just have the standard ikitasa as a player driven ship and we should recall these drones because they're taking damage now go in ikitasa you see that Kinetic with this, just a gaping hole right there. What rage? We got rage. Okay, that's good. But this is nice with these missile guidance computers because I can sort of alternate my um, my uh, like type of weaponry. Like I can sometimes have good application, sometimes I can have good range. The only thing is that they use mid slots, and mid slots are pretty useful. You can have a lot of tank from mid slots. I wonder what kind of incoming damage we're getting. We've got a lot of kinetic damage right here. A module has run out of charges. And, uh, I think it's mainly kinetic damage, or maybe it just depends on the race as well. Like maybe we could have, like we've only got Kaldari ships right here, so they do kinetic. Maybe if it's uh, Amar ships, then it does EM. I don't know if you can have Amar ships here. But I saw t tornadoes before, Minmatar, so I'm guessing you could see Amar as well. We're getting some decent application to this guy, though. 60% resist is actually pretty high for a bomber. Okay, let's go for this Cerberus. But not particularly quick here. It's pretty slow in terms of speed for this Drake. But, I mean... Oh, wait, he's going really far away. Where's this? But the thing is... If the tank is as good as it is right now, we might be able to just upgrade it. So yeah, where's our range here with dual range scripts? 23 kilometers, that's good. I think he's pulled range right here. That's what I was getting a bit confused, but I think it's because 
it was going for my drones. You know, I've actually heard people in the comments, they were telling me that there's double the amount of NPCs when you've got a Tengu or Tech 3 cruisers. That's a bit annoying. But I guess it's good because we will simulate more incoming DPS. Maybe that'll be good. <laughs> that could be a good thing, I guess. But now a bunch of it is being split up to this Tengu right here. And he's just triading away. So I can't really do much right here. Some of the drones got this Mantic Core. But they, you really feel their HP with their resist they've got. Oh, there's this boss. Recall the... Recall the drones. Maybe we can go with Javelin since it's very far away right here. 42 kilometers if we use both the missile guidance computers. Okay, now he's getting very close. Okay, maybe use our... Oh, the Tengu's already at it. So we're going to lose this. But we'll see at least the tank test. The tank test will be good. Yeah, look at that. Look how much damage he's going to be doing to the, uh, the boss. Now I'm using the wrong ammunition type as well. Hmm. That's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. In EVE Online, you always got bigger fish in the sea. But I like this. Look, we can see everything's attacking us right now. Our tank is holding up really good. I th I'm very certain or pr quite sure if this is the like uh, a good representation of the kind of NPCs you see in these sites, we'll be able to get a while and buy with three ballistic control systems. I'm quite certain we will. Yeah, you see he here. Uh, he, uh, Unfortunately, we lost the uh, loot right there. But maybe I can ask him what it gave at least. And we can, maybe we can just check what it gave just to just see what the loot is. Because I'm quite curious what kind of, uh, what kind of loot you get from these kind of sites. Let's see what kind of loot do you get. But we at least did one of these sites. I'm quite happy about that. Let's see what it gives right here. Okay, so we've got this Condor Red Force skin. Smuggler lockbox. I'm guessing this is like a form of like blue loot. Yeah, you can see it's like to NPC buy orders. You can see it's like a fixed value right here. Then we get a little bit of random things. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. This is the kind of loot you can get at least. And I'm quite happy about the performance of this Drake right here. It seems very strong. Maybe you could even upgrade it to having a better, having some like, better DPS as well to get through this site quicker. But the heavy assault missiles seem to go very smoothly with these two missile guidance computers, and the passive tank like this was seemed to be quite good. Wanted to do one site there just to see if we were able to survive or not. It definitely seems like we can survive with this ship. If it's really fast, maybe not. But I mean, we're an Alpha clone. We could obviously go better with like a Tech 2 battle cruiser as an Omega clone. If I was using an Omega clone to do this, I'd probably go with the, the Nighthawk. Because you can do so much damage with that ship right there. But that's enough for now. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I'll catch you guys later.